Heather Hardy, who is coming off of a win a couple of weeks ago at Broadway Boxing, keeping that undefeated record of 20 and zero now. Congrats on that. How was Thanks. it like competing at Broadway again? Oh, it was nice. Um, you know, I started my career on Broadway boxing. I was actually on Broadway. <laughs> I was in Brooklyn, but uh, it was nice to take it back to a club show where all my fans can be super close to the ring and hyped up for the big main event. You know, it was cool. Now, before we get into the news that you announced about your MMA debut after the fight, I think it's important for MMA fans that maybe aren't as familiar with boxing to kind of know a little bit about your history and some of the stuff you stand for. So I know you got into the boxing or the fighting game a little bit later. And I think I read that you said when you did get into it, you were kind of at a time where you weren't really sure what was next in life. And I read that you said that it felt like puzzle pieces were coming together when you started fighting or when you started training. So is that feeling of puzzle pieces coming together kind of what drives you to be successful and be this trailblazer for women in the sport? Well, uh, boxing is the first time I was 28 when I found it. It was the first time I was ever good at anything. So when I talk about the puzzle pieces coming together, it was like I was at a crossroads in my life. I was getting divorced. I was working up to six jobs just to put food on the table. I had my college degree, but couldn't do anything with it. So I was so confused and Sorry. Oh, no, I was so confused. And uh, when I found boxing and I got in the ring, it was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Because right. I was the first time I was ever good at something, and I wasn't even good at it yet. <laughs> so it just became a building process from there. And as far as being like an advocate for women, as I got into the business and, you know, my first 18 months in the amateurs, I won every title you could win as an amateur, turned pro, and then realized how much injustice there was just because I'm a girl. And um, as a parent of a teenager, I just couldn't let it sit, you know. Yeah, totally. Okay, so now let's talk about a little bit about your debut. It's going to be for Bellator, Madison Square Garden, arguably the biggest card of, that they're having this year. Yeah. And you're competing against Alice, the soccer mom Yager. So it's going to be a battle of the mamas. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, how are you feeling about just making your debut on such a big night and a big card? Well, that's what I wanted. I wanted to do the MMA in a big way. You know, I felt like as far as my fighting is concerned, I already proved myself as a strong New York fighter. I have a huge fan base. Um about as tough as they come for our little blonde girls running around in the ring. So uh, it only made sense. You know, anybody asked me, could they could ask me if I wanted to do a sword fight in Madison Square Garden. When you're from Brooklyn, you do anything to get under those lights. So uh, it just really made sense right now. Okay. And how did that relationship uh, come together with Bellator? Because I think you originally were going to debut with Invicta. What made you decide to go with Bellator instead for your debut? Well, the thing with Invicta is it just didn't work out. You know, the girl that I was supposed to fight pulled out the day before we were flying out. And, you know, when you're making a debut on a small show like that, I was just like, I'm, I wasn't prepared to take any opponent. You know, I, I never had an MMA fight before. I didn't have like an illustrious amateur career where I was ready to you step in with anybody, you know, we need to do research and really make sure it happened the right way. So when Invicta didn't happen, I thought, all right, I'm going to focus on boxing now. And this Bellator just kind of came about through um, Michael Chandler is sponsored and I are sponsored through the same protein company, Dimatize, and it's some of the inside business there. Just wound up, oh, do you know Heather Hardy? Uh, look up Heather Hardy, and then the talks went around, and that's how it started. Okay, awesome. Yeah, it looks like, you know, that's what most people are talking about, is since Scott Coker and the new team came around, they're, they're building an exciting roster. So yeah. Yeah, that was a good call to, to get you in there, too. Yeah. And so you, I think I read uh, that you had said you wanted to kind of double dip between both sports of boxing yeah. and MMA. And to me, that just sounds like you're going to be super busy, training camp, all of that going on. Is there a number of fights that you personally have, like a capped number of how many times you want to compete throughout the year? I uh, know. You know, when I choose my boxing fights, it's more like when there are big cards in the area. You know, the Barclays Center does Brooklyn boxing over there. And when I hear who's going to be the main event figure, 
all right, that makes sense. I want to do it. So, I mean, last year I didn't fight for six months because there were no shows over there. So it just turned out like that. Uh, the beginning of the year I had fought four times. So it, it really all depends on when the shows are going to be over there. But I teach boxing. I practically live in Gleason's gym, and I'm never not ready to box. You can ask me to box in two weeks, and I could do it. Like nothing, because my life is boxing. Right. Okay, and then, but you have been working on the MMA stuff, too, and I believe you've been training with Daniel Gracie, correct? Mm hmm Daniel Gracie and Ray Longo. Okay, so can you tell at least the MMA fans or, or fans around how those relationships came together and just what that experience has been like? Sure. Uh, for my last fight, I was training at the Renzo Gracie in, in Manhattan with Hollis, and when I was getting ready for this fight, he was busy with his new school and doing things, so he suggested I work with Daniel because he couldn't really spend so much time with me, and so I did that, and uh, I'm in Brooklyn, Daniel's in Brooklyn, and I knew that if I was going to transition to MMA, my hands are great. My boxing coach is a three-time world ch championship kickboxer, world champion kickboxer. My legs are good. Uh, I needed top of the top level jujitsu and wrestling coaches, and I know that that's it's, it's either one of the Gracies, and then I go out for my wrestling out by Ray Longo, my kickboxing, and there's a bunch of girls out there for me to spar with. So I'm really looking at like the top of the top. And so, is there anybody in MMA that you're a huge fan of? You know, I, I'm not one of those girls, uh, or so should I say one of those fighters who watches fights. Like, you know, when I think, I'm sure so many people can agree that when you train, like, 18 hours a day, you don't want to watch the stuff when you get home. Right. <laughs> Like, I can talk to you about Law and Order all day, because that's all I watch when I get home before I pass out. But, like, uh, you know, Blonde Fighter is a really, really good friend of mine. We do. I was always her boxing spar before she got ready for her MMA, um, her MMA fight. She always would come to Gleason's, and I will be her boxing spar. So I don't necessarily have a favorite fighter. Uh, I respect them all, though, because this training... Uh, Regimen is sick. 